Welcome back, Flare community. I am delighted to announce a new set of videos covering Trustline, Probity Vault, and also the RA Stablecoin. Today, I'm going to give you a brief overview of each of these, how they work together, and more importantly, how these applications combined will be a game changer for decentralized finance. This overview will be expanded upon via a number of deep dives. So if you don't want to miss out, then be sure to subscribe. Let's jump into it, starting with the problem which is being solved. Now, typically borrowing money is a service offered by banks. Now, maybe you have a good credit history and maybe the bank will allow you to borrow money as a loan in exchange for a fee. But consider those who have poor or limited credit history. The banks are able to exclude them as they are the central authority which determines who they loan out to and who they do not. Now, I want you to imagine a world where everybody is equal. Everyone is included. This is decentralized finance and the Probity Trustline ecosystem allows all people to borrow credit if they wish. As someone looking to borrow money, you will no longer have to rely on the bank. Now, let's take a step back and see what's on offer here. The Trustline Credit Network is going to be a game changer for both the XRP Ledger and the Flare Network. To fully understand why, I would like to bring your attention to a couple of built-in features of the XRP ledger itself, issued currencies and trust lines. Issued currencies represents assets on the XRP ledger other than XRP. These issued currencies often represent value held by gateways in the world outside of the XRP ledger. But what are gateways, I hear you ask? Well, gateways are businesses that provide a way for money and other forms of value to move in and outside of the XRP ledger. An issuing gateway receives money or other assets of value outside of the XRP ledger and issues a currency on the XRP ledger. This provides a direct way for customers to get money in and out of the XRP ledger. All currencies on the XRP ledger, other than XRP, are tied to a specific gateway. So now that we have some background information on the XRP ledger, let's look at how Trustline fits into all of this. At the center of the Trustline ecosystem, is RA, a crypto collateralized stablecoin pegged to the US dollar. Now here's where things get really interesting. RA will be issued on the XRP ledger, meaning it can be traded on the XRP ledger's built-in decentralized exchange, which settles in three to four seconds and is extremely cheap. The first gateway for RA will be Trustline Inc. Now what makes this particularly interesting is the fact that RA will be issued by the Flare Network, a completely decentralized entity, making RA the first of its kind. RA is engineered for payments, lending and trading. So now that we have a basic understanding of what RA actually is, a crypto collateralized stablecoin issued by the XRP ledger by a decentralized entity, the Flare Network. Powerful stuff, I'm sure you will agree. So how is it collateralized? Who collateralizes it? Let me introduce Probity and more specifically, the Probity Vault. Probity is a smart contract system responsible for minting RA stablecoin, 
and executing loans on behalf of depositors. So what is a depositor? A depositor is a user who deposits collateral, such as Spark or F assets, into a probity vault, allowing them to receive RA or earn interest. This is what allows probity to mint RA in a fully decentralized manner. Now this satisfies the supply side of the probity ecosystem. Users willing to supply collateral, which probity can use to mint RA to lend to the borrowers. Now these borrowers will drive the demand for RA. As mentioned earlier, banks are not always able to provide loans to people. In fact, for some people, banking services are completely inaccessible. Now imagine a credit system where you can access loans or provide collateral for a yield in a decentralized, trustless manner. That is what we have right here with the Trustline ecosystem. The Trustline app will bring all of this together with a sleek user interface, allowing you to easily borrow credit and send value to others. Now before we wrap up, I would like to show you a demo of the Trustline app from February of this year. Now this demo may be slightly outdated or lacking some functionality, but I think it's a great example of what the Trustline application is capable. Let's have a look. Hello and welcome to this demo of the Trustline app. Uh, we're going to walk through a scenario of uh, a case in the real world where there are three friends, Alice, Bob, and Charlie. And uh, Bob, uh, they're all going to a concert and uh, Bob buys the tickets online for his friends. So these tickets cost $50 a piece. Um, Bob pays $150 for the tickets and his two friends owe him $50. So we're going to see how his friends can pay Bob back using the Trustline app, um, which is a form of credit payment. So let's go ahead and open up the Trustline app on all of these phones. Um, so this phone over here is going to be Alice. I'm going to write Alice in there, create the account. This uh, phone over here is going to be Bob. So we're going to create these accounts for each user. Here's Charlie. So this is what the user sees when they first open the app. They're prompted to create their account. Um, and there's some things going, going on behind the scenes there. Uh, all right, so now Alice's account is ready. And what you see here is the payment screen. Um, and so essentially uh, what you want to do uh, if you're Bob and you want to accept uh, credit payments from, from your friends, you're going to have to trust them. So um, essentially what, what a trust line is, is it's just a credit line and every credit line has a credit limit. So we're going to uh, create a $50 credit limit for Alice and Charlie. Um, these credit limits can be adjusted at any time. So we're just going to start off with this $50 credit limit, create it for Alice. We're going to do the same thing for Charlie. Right. So over here on Alice's phone, we go to balances. We can see there's a, a link with Bob. We can see Charlie has that too. We can see Bob has it with both of them. You can drill down into more details here. Uh, the UI needs to be updated, but you can see that there's a, uh, a limit of uh, $50 that um, Bob has set for Alice, and the current balance is zero. So if I'm Alice, um, I want to pay Bob back for buying those concert tickets. And this is uh, essentially this is uh, an IOU that I'm sending to Bob. I'm saying hey, I'm giving you this $50 IOU, and um, it's going to settle later. And so we've done that payment. If we go over to the History tab, we can see there's some details. Um, it was a successful payment, so uh, uh, 
uh, for over here, just refresh this, this page, we can see Bob's balance has increased by 50 um, from Alice. And then we're going to have Charlie also pay Bob this IOU. And you can see uh, on this balances page um, that it works like a credit card. So um, there's a, a total minimum payment due. And in this early version of the app, um, anyone who owes a debt has to pay back in full. Uh, we're looking at ways for debt financing, similar to a credit card. Um, and it has a billing cycle, just like a credit card. So it's something that everyone understands. Um, the next payment due date is the 20th of March. And the next closing date is the 5th of March. So essentially what that means is there's like a 15 day grace period after the next closing date uh, where Alice has to pay off uh, this balance here. So for example, if uh, the day comes in March where Alice needs to pay this off, she can, she can just schedule that payment and um, pay it off here. And then the app will um, draw the funds from Alice's linked account. So in this early version of the app, um, it uses XRP uh, to settle debts. And the reason for that is because we need licensing for um, US uh, dollar clearing. Uh, and that's pretty vital because XRP is somewhat volatile and US dollar is not. So um, we are eager to get that feature implemented and the licensing done. Um, but essentially that's how that would work. And um, let's see, did, okay, so we, we also sent Bob $50 from Charlie's account. So if you just refresh over here, we see that uh, Bob now has a, a $100 balance. And his minimum payment is $0 because he doesn't owe anyone money. Um, now the cool thing about this app is he can use these uh, IOU balances to send money to someone else. So Bob was paid back um, for the uh, concert tickets. Let's say him and Alice go to a bar and Alice buys Bob a drink, so he owes Alice $5. He can pay Alice $5 and uh, essentially what happens is the obligation uh, that Alice owes to Bob is decreased. So if we just refresh that, we see that the balance goes down by $5. Um, and, uh, and at the end of the month, uh, Alice only pays $45. Um, so that's essentially a uh, scenario of how this app would work. It's you know similar to other peer-to-peer -peer payment apps like Venmo, um, except for the fact that Venmo doesn't really allow you to pay using credit. I mean, you can use a credit card, but no one does link their credit card because uh, they charge a 3% transaction fee for every transaction, 3%, that disincentivizes a lot of people from actually using credit. So they, they link their debit card, which on its own has security implications. Um, but uh, yeah, that's essentially it for uh, today's demo. Um, again, this is a very early version of the app um, and there's a lot of new features uh, planned that we're really excited about. Uh, and I just want to say thank you for your time watching this uh, demo. And uh, we look forward to coming out with new features and uh, sharing those with you in the future. Thank you. So there we have it. This concludes my brief overview. I will be expanding further on each component in the coming videos, starting with the R-Ray stablecoin. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe for more content covering the Flare Network. 
It's been an absolute pleasure as always. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, I'm out.